Hey guys, I was working on this little um, kerosene heater and I thought I'd show you guys how I'm going to fix it but also if you don't know about these I was going to explain how they work so watch on. We have a, just a typical kerosene heater. I have several of these. Um, this is one I picked up this summer for next to nothing. Um, the Simpsons that this is doing is it's just not lighting so it's not sparking. Um, virtually all of them will have screws down the side or some are plugged into the side and the whole top cover comes off and you're left with your guts. You got your burn chamber right here and you have your fan, your blower and your air pump. So what happens, let me just move that out of the way just a little bit, pull it back so you can see. Now some of these will have a spark plug, some will just be this little igniter thing, um, but you got a spark plug wire and that will spark constantly. It never stops sparking while this thing is running, okay? You have a fuel line and an air line and an optical sensor and you have your fan, your blower, and an air pump. And what this does is you'll see this line right here. This comes down, and you see it right there, and it just pops right up. And this one right next to it, right here, is the fuel line, and that just drops right into the tank. Nothing special there. And you'll see them come right up to this little manifold. And what happens is, just like when you're blowing over the top of the straw, and the fluid comes up, the exact same thing happens here, a Venturi effect. So this one is our air. So our air is coming up, pushing through there and blowing in. And the process of blowing over an orifice in here, it's pulling the fuel up and squirting it in through this little nozzle right there. And the spark plug is igniting at the same time. At the same time, this fan is blowing air across there around the housing because um, this is all sealed and adding oxygen to the fire and pushing it out. Um, this also adds oxygen to the fire through the, the back of this which is an air pump and you can adjust that and it's pretty basic. So you'll see on the very back of your, um, this is your pump, that's your fan up there, this is your pump, your air pump. You have two ports. This one is the adjustment and this is just for um, testing. So you can actually screw a fitting in there and put, you know, it only goes up to like three PSI's or something. So usually one of the best things to use is an engine vacuum gauge because on those there'll be a, uh, most of them I've seen have, go up to like 10 PSI or something. So you can measure the pressure. But you'll have that running and you'll adjust this to the pressure that it says on the side. This one says 3.4 I believe. Yeah, 3.4 PSI is how much this is supposed to be. Um, so you just adjust that if you're just fine tuning it, if your your front disc isn't getting red or something. But anyway, this one isn't sparking. So you have your spark plug, you have your spark thing, and you have your your ignition coil on this one is just right underneath, right there. And these are really basic. Um, they're just two wires. And then go to the go to this. So what we're gonna do is I actually. You know, if you if this does go out on you, if you're watching this because there's no spark, um, I just bought a universal one, and well, not necessarily a universal one, the cheapest one I could find for anything. It just happens to have two spark plug leads, which I don't really care. I'll just dead end one, and the other one I'll just run to there. Having two spark leads just means that it actually has two coils inside. So if one side dies one day, I can just use the other side. But it's two wires. You just hook it up in place of your old one. Just route it right to the spark plug. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to do red to red, um, white to black, and we'll go from there. Really couldn't be any easier. This one just the old ignition coil um, just unplugs white and red. That unplugs, and then we'll just have to pull the spark plug through. There you go, the old one's out. Trying to put the new one on. So I just temporarily, I just plugged it in for a second. Just making sure. Got one sparkly going to nothing. The other one's going to the, the plug. And I'm just gonna plug it in for just a split second to see if we get spark. You can even see the kerosene spraying out. You see? So, we're good to go. 
I'll just route this to get this in there nicely. But this one, I think the uh, the original one that replaced this was about 60, 70, 80 bucks, something like that. Um, this only cost me like 25 bucks shipped. So maybe 27 bucks shipped um, a couple months ago. But you can find them online. So just type in igniter and find the cheapest igniter you can get. You know, some of them have really short spark plug leads. Um, I can't mount this to the original spot. But... You know, originally it was smart mounted up here to the bottom of this thing. So I can't mount it there, but I can just set it down in here. It doesn't, won't hurt it. And I'll just tape up one lead really good. And the other lead will come up and plug in. Oh, now if I didn't tell you what the optical sensor does, because that can go out too. What the optical sensor does is if it doesn't, if this is running for a couple seconds, um, and it doesn't see light after a couple seconds into this optical sensor. It trips the trips the little breaker back here on the back. But this can be replaced too. But it does go bad once in a while. But just make sure that, you know, if you're having trouble with it just tripping, you know, with it blowing heat and then just tripping, it's probably your optical sensor. And with that, you can just make sure the screen is clean. Uh, make sure there's no spider web right in front of the little hole because it's just looking for light. Um, if it's not spraying good, um, you can take off the little tip. You can clean it. Um, if you got a lot of debris, you can clean this little line. People do put filters in these lines. Uh, make sure it's a pretty coarse filter um, because most of junk, it's gravity fed, so most of junk is heavier and will fall down. But um, if it's too thick, then it's too hard for it to pull up, and you may have to turn up your pressure on the back. And I'll show you how to check the pressure here in a second. that on there temporarily and let's plug her in. There we go. Woo! Nice and hot. Okay, I just jammed it in this hole in the back. So you have your, um, this is your adjustment port, this is your field port, I just took out the little plug, and I just wedged this in there, and this is just an engine vacuum gauge, so, should be about 3.4, I'm about 4, so I need to drop it down a little bit. Now we're adjusted to the right pressure. Well, there you go. If you're having trouble with yours, hopefully this helped you. Um, another common problem is the uh, the air pump at the back actually breaking, like the little veins inside, and that not pushing any air through the little air pump, and being able to squirt fuel into the uh, the intake. And you can see that by taking that off. If you see nothing coming out of that nozzle. When you plug it in, there's a good chance your air pump is broken. But usually it's spark, air, it's just like a small engine, you know, make sure you got spark, make sure you got fuel. You can get out of the, that clogged fuel line, that little fuel line that goes down. You can just take compressed air and you can just, you know, take it off of the top and just blow down through it. If there's any debris, it'll blow it out and then you can resuck it up, you know. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or questions about these or anything else, just leave a comment below. Um, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to click the little thumbs up, thumbs down, and share. Why not? Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye.